Oh, no, 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 come on. <laughs> we, we, we had words about the, uh, um, shall we call it, sweet popcorn gate. Yes. But this is, this is just taking the... Uh, okay, there you go. Oh, okay. It's not contaminated, is it? I don't know, I don't know, I didn't put it here. Uh, I can't quite tell what it is. Bacon? Don't tell what bacon do you? I think I've got some sort of cheese and thyme. Or, cheese? Or... Cheesy popcorn? I think this is ribs. Ribs? Ribs. Go on, try it. Only if you try my my bacon, apparently. You're, you're no. Right. I don't even know what I just had. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is this? It must mm. be some kind of popcorn roulette. Hello! Uh, I am anticipating catabolic collapse. But you can call me AC. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Chris. And we are Maybe Movies. Uh, what we do is every month we take a couple of films, we pluck out certain key characters, drop them into the plot of the opposite film, and see if they can sink or swim. And then at the end of the month, we vote for which one we think should be our maybe movie of the month. If you've not joined us before, then just a bit of a recap for you. This month is our kind of Halloween light, our introduction to spooky season. And we are looking at what if Charles Lee Ray, the Lakeshore Strangler, we are overflowing with popcorn today. <laughs> Sorry, as I was saying, we were seeing what would happen if Chucky from Child's Play was given to Andy Davis from Toy Story, and likewise uh, Andy Barkley in Chicago in Toy in Toy Play. That's the one we're doing at the moment. That's yes. the one we did last time. In what's it called again? Child's Story. That's it. That's the one. Not a Child's Story. <laughs> time will tell. Put it to a vote. Anyway, sorry, yes. What would happen if Andy Barkley in Child's Play got a Buzz Lightyear? Child's Story? That's what we're doing. Oh, sorry. I, I'm I was just I was referencing. Can I continue so with my many intro, titles. please? I apologise. I apologise. <laughs> sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Chris is going to be doing the intro today. <laughs> we are doing Child's Story, which is the story of Andy Barkley from Chicago. Yes. Getting a Buzz Lightyear in his world. Stay tuned to find out. Well done. Was that good? Yeah. Well, yeah, very well good. Done. In fact, I am going to take a bit more of a break because uh, it, oh. it looks like it's also the turn of Sam to do our shout out for today. So, hi. Yes, I'm talking once again about one of my favourite artists online, Poltergeist OD. A great uh, rap artist, does a lot of horrorcore stuff, which is what I really, really love. And I'd love you all to go out and take a look at one of his latest tracks, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which you can find on YouTube and on Spotify and probably several other places that I'm com completely forgetting. Yeah, check it out. Uh, if you like horror-themed rap, give it a try. You'll like what he does. And especially uh, listen to this one because apparently it's going to be in a game soon. A game? Yeah. So congrats, Polargast on that one. Glad to hear you going upward and onward. And as for the rest of you guys, check it out. Give them a listen. Yeah, it is, it is a really good track as well. And um, I think that's about all we've got. That's it. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to have to put up with us for a little bit longer as we try and fuddle our way through this. Yeah. Oh, my God. One little bit of trivia that I did notice, and I'm sure it, it's equally a, either a coincidence or it was done there on, on purpose. At the end of Child's Play. Crap. Yep. When his cop buddy comes rushing in, yeah, who I always think it is not. He always looks like the guy who plays Serge in Beverly Hills Cop. He's not, but I do know. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. When he rushes in and he sees that um, Chris Harrison has been injured, and he rushes and um, gets the phone and gets the cops to come. Yeah, he says, "Yeah, we're down here at Brewster Apartments." <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of got our, our work cut out for us here, haven't we? 
because uh, this one's not nearly as simple. No, it's not. It's really tricky. One of the big problems I'm seeing is a bit of a lack of a bad guy. I yes, I, yes. I, I looked at it and I thought there's there's ways of recontextualizing some of the scenes to fit in with a new narrative. But we need a new narrative, and one of the things we need is an antagonist. Yes, it does. It needs some kind of opposition to give it some purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. My head went off on a bit of a weird one last night, and I tr- I came up with an idea. Again, it's when I looked back at it, I went, actually, that's a bit shit. But I came up with a, an idea that might serve the purpose, and it might also change some of the stuff that's in Child's Play already as the voodoo stuff, and do it in a slightly different way so that we can still... <laughs> I'll explain. <laughs> That's yeah, probably a good do. idea rather please than... Do. I kind of was thinking about things other like 80s films, so things like Critters and Blade Runner and things like that. Mm. What if the the life force that, that is bringing Buzz alive is in itself an energy-based life form that can animate inanimate objects and takes on the resonance of those objects so when it becomes a Buzz Lightyear, it thinks it's a Buzz Lightyear. Right. So what's the supernatural thing? I must admit, I kind of looked at it more, well, Buzz Lightyear is an alien. It's probably going to end up being more of a sci-fi story than a horror story. Okay. But then if we're doing that, we can say that it's not the only one that's arrived. There are others who are not nice and have become nasty things, and he has to try and stop them. All right. Okay. Wow, that's a bit of a vault one. Um... Even went so far as to say, because if we wanted to keep the whole possession thing involved in it they are energy based life forms but to revert back to their energy state they can't do it from something that's inanimate they have to possess something that's living to use its life force to then transubstantiate back to their energy form what are you thinking Terry Sam? so he's trying to stop them from going around killing people Call me intrigued I think we should all put our cards on the table before we decide which one we're going to go with okay I have to admit mine is really rather simple um, but I, well, I was thinking Obviously, we've got a Buzz who thinks he's the real Buzz. What if that applied to other toys? Like, what if the neighbor's kid had a Zorg doll? And it'd be this little war between the toys. Uh, I don't know if that's good enough to carry the movie, uh, but that's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, I was thinking on the line, similar to what you were saying about how some sort of supernatural an source, an entity yeah. of some sort that goes into the doll... And basically, I would have said that Buzz thinks he's Buzz Lightyear, but he's somehow accidentally killing people. So he's almost then becomes a bad guy without even knowing it. Okay. So we could still... I like the idea of still trying to keep a horror film well, with Buzz Lightyear. Something that you said there, and then something that I said there, you said about um, some kind of evil or, or, or something like that, and then I mentioned about transubstantiation. He's an angel. That's taken form in in Buzz so there are demons that have taken form in other toys oh in the Buzz Lightyear franchise of the toys or just any toys it can be any toys but we'd prefer it to be I mean we we've got toys in the same way that in Toy Story there's a, a smorgasbord of different toys so it's yeah. just basically going to be like some sort of war between toys as opposed to an evil toy some of them will be evil because they're possessed by demons mm. but as they're fighting they're going to be killing Killing innocent people, people on so the way. they're killing people so that they can take the uh, the life force to turn themselves into proper forms. <laughs> right, okay. <clears throat> and yet another link between these two films, or similarity between the, between Toy Story and Child's Play, which I didn't even realize. I didn't think that we didn't realize before. Both of them have somebody being defenestrated. Somebody goes out of the window in both films. Oh yes, indeed, <laughs> indeed they do. Yes, it's almost like the makers of Toy Story goes, "What are we going to do?" Well, I was watching Child's Play last night. How can we make Child's Play into a kid's story? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, what do we think? It's going to be tricky if we're adding more characters into it, i.e. the toys. Is it, are we talking how many toys are going to become alive? We're still going to try and follow the through line of the story and like the different scenes that are in Child's Play. Mm. We just need enough to hit those beats. So, so and like four or five at the four most. Four at the most. Because we could even start it with when they first appear is when the cop is chasing... I suppose it wouldn't be Charles Lee Way in this case. We could have to upgrade Eddie as the guy that he chases into the store. And so you could have the evil ones live, <coughs> are taken away by Eddie, for example, which keeps that part of the storyline in so they have to kind of backtrack and track down where they've gone. It starts to take it out of the building and away from Andy. 
if we do that. It allows us to do similar kind of things like in Child's Play where Chucky makes Andy go halfway across bloody Chicago. Oh, looking right. Looking for them. Oh, right. Yes. It would make sense. But at least one of them needs to have ended up in the building, otherwise no defenestration. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. If we're being realistic, it should be the wherever the last bad guy should be. Mm -hmm. It goes out and then it comes back and it's all at home. If we're keeping it the same that she goes and buys the doll from the street vendor... Yeah. That, again, it might be a bit of a stretch because of Maggie's character. He's got another doll. Oh, I'll take that because I want that to give to my niece or something. And oh, that's the okay. evil one that's in the house. Uh, so we've okay. got the two of them. Yeah. So we keep it contained to the apartment. Well, I was thinking to the building rather than the apartment. I was thinking somebody else in the building might end up with one of the other dolls. Or maybe she's got family that lives elsewhere in the building. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would make sense. That would make sense, yeah. If we're beginning Act 1, mm -hmm. are we keeping a, a chase scene between yes. Charles Lee Ray and Eddie Caputo? Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh, well, well right. done for calling the last name. I couldn't remember it. Thank you. Gold star? I think so. Yeah, that's definitely worth a gold star. I was going to say, I thought we all get a gold star because we With. managed to build a narrative from nothing. Well, I think this is a narrative don't... that will carry the movie. Well, be yes. careful. We're speaking too soon. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying it's going to be a great movie, but I'm, I think it's a strong enough a narrative to yes. carry the movie. So we have uh, our chase scene. Are we saying that instead of Eddie doing some sort of voodoo ritual, that this just happens to be the place where these spirits come down? Yeah. You Simple. still get the the lightning or whatever coming down from through the, the roof and setting the place on fire. Yes, and, and maybe we'll see kind of like orbs or something flying off it, hitting random things around the around the shop. Yes, and obviously one of them hits Buzz. Yeah, we've got a foreshadow. Yeah, yeah. In Al's toy barn. Al's toy barn. Yes. Yes, of course it should be Al's toy barn. Can I have a Zerg? I take it. Yeah, it's got to be Zerg. Yeah, there's got to be a Zerg in there somewhere. Zerg, Zerg is the arch demon. <laughs> what about the aliens? Oh no, they're not part of. They're are, not they, part are they part of? Buzz well, no. Uh, I'm only thinking from their, their really bad cartoon movie they did many years ago, which was called Buzz Lightyear. I want to think of it now. It was in the late something 90s. Ranger? No, it was something like the, the Journey Begins or something like that. And that uh, was the oh, pilot okay. episode for their TV show that they did. So I think oh, it was the successful Toy Story 2. Right. I think the aliens are in it. What, the little, the, 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 the little green, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. therefore, they're technically... They are part of his continuity. Yeah, yeah. so Pizza Planet is almost a Buzz Lightyear land. I don't know, because oh. those, those things are really... Uh, they always come across as... They're, they're, they're like the minions, you don't really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Evil. But I suppose we could get an evil you one. Might like as well, could, you know, could have a bunch of evil ones. It, it bring an interesting moment of comedy to it, because you can imagine, like... It, Squeak. Uh, squeak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, squeak. Oh, what the, what the and fuck? And then the mouth oh, opens and so it eats somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have an alien or two? Three. Oh, oh, three? You think they should all be the same? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that makes, yes, uh, yeah, that makes the... the oh, God. As uh. at least three. Well, while I was writing them down, you said three, so I wrote down... Alien 3. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'll, I'll get the phone. Toy Story meets Alien 3. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm fond of the director's cut. We haven't even technically started yet. No, no we, we haven't, haven't, no. But the, well, the we, chasing, yeah. We, we've done the chasing, we've done mm. 18. Right, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, this sort of going to run on rails once we've arranged all this shit, right? Oh, that was the other thing I didn't know, of, which we could include to mirror from, from, from Child's Play. I mean, obviously, in Child's Play, Chucky doesn't talk just because he's being an arsehole. Yeah. What about if the buzz, it's weakened by it so it can't animate all the time? So at the times when there's other people around, coincidentally, it can't, it can't reveal that it's alive. Uh, so to we're explaining how the adults don't know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. We then cut to, we find we, the introduction with with Andy and like making thing. his shit breakfast breakfast yeah, his shitty breakfast in bed yeah. which is awful by the way I, if I was the mum I'd be really disappointed I'd be like I'm, I think there's going to be something wrong with your future if you don't good, breakfast he like, is like six well still he wasn't even trying he how can you burn toast in a toaster exactly pop out. I know that's the one <laughs> exactly. bit that really didn't make sense and he pours well, the milk all breakfast? over the tray doesn't he and you think oh come on where's your balance mate yeah as you said he is six why is he smoking as well he's got shaky hands I got you a new crap pipe for Christmas. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. You don't condone putting your six-year-olds on crack. No. no. <laughs> don't do that. Not a good idea unless you don't want any sleep. Or any kids. Yeah, so he, that's true. So he brings the breakfast to his mum who's asleep. All of that bit is going to run on rails. That'll be the That'll same. That'll be fine, thing. yeah. 
up until the point where so nothing really is going to be different until he comes back with Buzz. Yeah, because she's going to be disappointed in his presence. She'll have to go to work. And then when she's at work, Maggie will come along and go, there's a dude in the alley. So we're saying that it's one of the aliens that she buys? That Maggie buys? Oh, look at it. It's so cute. Squeaky, squeaky. Throw in Zerg as well. No, we've got a Zerg. Yeah, but it was it's, it's not Zerg that's been bought yet. It was the Buzz Lightyear. The Buzz Lightyear that's been the, bought. But definitely the Zerg should be in the trolley along with the other toys. Can't, can't like Maggie that. assume that that could be another Buzz Lightyear? Like, if he doesn't like that or, or something like that, we'll get... He, his mum buys Buzz for his birthday. But Maggie goes, well, tell you what, I've got some cash. We'll get the Zerg. We can give it to Andy for Christmas. Yes. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. Gold Star. Gold Star. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that puts them both in, in the building. Fantastic. Are we moving then to uh, the nine o'clock news, wherever it is that they watch? Yes. Yes, it's They're babysitting and, and bedtime and all of the stuff that might happen. Are we saying that like Zerg kills her but gets interrupted before he can perform his ritual? Well, he gets interrupted because she goes out the window. Oh! Well, Maggie. Yeah. Oh, Maggie. right. So he's trying to do the ritual on her and then she freaks out and falls yeah. out the window. Yeah. No, that's better. Are we saying that so that Buzz is involved in the fight, or is it a, a moment where he can't move? I think he should get involved in the fight personally. It needs to amp up a bit more. Mm. Yeah, because we need to see that there's a. We need to show this conflict. Basically, small soldiers now. I think. At this point, it's starting to turn into it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Does Are anyone we... remember that film? I do. Oh, you're good. I've never seen it. I know the name, but I've never seen it. No, you're not missing. Because we're kind of basically at the end of Act One. Do we want to keep it confined to the apartment or do we want to expand it now beyond the confines of the comp- apartment? Because what we could say is Maggie goes out the window but takes Zerg with her. I was thinking we need to get Zerg out of the apartment until the end of the movie. Yeah, so it's the two of them go out. She obviously gone. Gone, yeah. But he's, but Zerg survives and and does a runner before the cops show up. Yeah, what, out of the house? Well, he's, been, he's gone out the window with he's her. He's literally gone out the window with her. Yeah, yeah, both of them go out. So I mean, he could go into the basement or he could hide in another building for a couple of days and then try again. Or It puts him in a nice... He's out of the way for the moment so okay. we can save him for the end of the movie. But so, he's laid there for the police to find. Yes, of course, yes. So do we want to say then that for some reason, I don't have a reason why Eddie would have taken the aliens? Because I want to keep that part of the storyline in if we can. Oh, right. So you think Eddie's got the aliens. Right. Yes. I see. I thought you said Eddie. I AD. see. AD, no. I was like, Andy or AD or AD. Eddie? Eddie. It's like, I was eating popcorn. Yeah, right. Yeah, if Eddie's got the aliens, which is why Zerg wants to watch the 9 o'clock news. Ah, yes. Yes, that sort of makes sense. Well, but that brings us to the end of Act 1. I think it does. Brief. Fantastic. Mate, there was a lot of talking at the beginning about what to do. Absolutely. But that's good. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few yo-yos. <laughs> well, as, as the is that what you call goes. them in, 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 your, in your house? Yo-yos? Yeah, yeah, yo-yos. Well, eggs have yolks. Yolk yolks? Yolk yolk yolks. Yolk yolk yolks. Okay, so there you go. On on that bombshell, we have first and foremost not broken this in the first act. So please do come back and join us next Wednesday when we'll be looking at Act 2 of Child Story. What did I do? You both outvoted me <laughs> on, on the name. I'm still, still sore about wrong. it. He said child's story. Child's uh, story. You know what? He can do it. <laughs> so, that's the end of Breaking Bad. I uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, join us next on Act 2. As always, have a wonderful weekend. Have a brilliant start to next week. And we will see you then. As always, guys. TTFA. Welcome to Maybe Movies. Ba 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 